retired Brigadier General Yaroslav Strojic. He is an adjunct professor at the University of Wroclaw, Strats Point Foundation, and previously he served as Director of Analyses at the Polish Military Intelligence Service and Deputy Intelligence Director at NATO Headquarters. Uh, Yaroslav, thanks so much for being with us. We're going to tap into your military knowledge here. So as you're looking at this massive convoy of Russian troops, artillery, what is the plan? I mean, they, it's been relatively exposed, but one would think that if they're going to siege the city of Kiev, if Putin's plan is to, to establish a government that is friendly towards the Kremlin and function as a satellite of Russia, he would not want to destroy the city. Uh, good morning. Uh Yes, I mean that's 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 a very good question. I mean, what's the what's the current state of military uh, operation as Mr. Putin is claiming a special operation? So it seems like uh, uh, after failures of the first wave, uh, as Russians call it, first echelon uh, of military units, now they are regrouping. Now they are trying to to get to a second stage, a second echelon of this operation. Uh, providing new logistical support. As we saw during the first phase, we saw some military equipment, tanks, BMPs. Uh, um, so there was a lack of fuel, lack of food in a certain uh, occasions. Uh, so now they are just trying to provide the logistic support first and then to take another action. So uh, I would say like that, after Initial successes of Ukraine armed forces, great. I mean, great morale, uh, great equipment, great tactics. Now we will be facing a second wave of Russian attack, Russian aggression, and that's very dangerous and uh, could be very successful as well. We see that his goal is to uh, to, to provide uh, or to attack two major uh, Ukrainian cities. Uh, the Kharkov, which is on the screen now, the attack on the central part of Kharkov by, by the rockets, and then uh, Kiev. Uh, so uh, Putin decided and his commanders to go with urban area uh, attacks, which is, first of all, a war crime, and we should mm -hmm. tell it every day to the Russian commanders and to the Russian politicians. And we, will sh we should remind them the Yugoslavia from the 90s and the fate of the generals who are now in jails all over Europe, and then that will be the fate of the uh, Russian generals and politicians, hopefully some of them, uh, in the near future. So we are waiting for this. Uh, nothing is over. Everything is possible. Uh, as I said, morale of the uh, Russian forces seems to be low, but it could change overnight. Uh, yeah, Ukraine very good up. points. But this target, this is two days of this long convoy out in the open, exposed, the vehicles very close together, as you mentioned, running out of fuel, running out of food. Hasn't that been an opportunity for all of this time for Ukraine to not only prepare for it better, but to target it? Is there no way to target this now before things start to happen? They shouldn't target that, bearing in mind that they have limited ammo, they have a limited number of rockets. Uh, I, I am very gladly hearing that uh, Ukraine is receiving more uh, Turkish drones uh, by Raktar TB2, uh, and that's very, very good. But I would say like that, it's a waste of ammunition to target uh, trucks. Uh, they, should be, they should target uh, mainly tanks, as artillery systems, uh, some uh, systems, communication systems. So the, the, the convoy itself looks uh, dangerous on the, on the one hand, but on the other hand, it's, the, it's not the most important target. You waste your uh, ammunition, as I said, a limited one. Uh, so that's, that's how it looks at, at, this, at this moment. So uh, that's the reality. They should target uh, the aviation, the Russian aviation, the Russian helicopters, as they do. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the, I would say, the paradox. That is very, very interesting. So when you look at the Russian Air Force compared to the Ukrainian Air Force, the sheer size of the Russian army compared to Ukraine's, it generally, generally works out to be half. 
However, now you have all of these citizens, and we don't know what the numbers are there, volunteering with whatever weapons they can be given or that they can make in their own homes. You also have all of this, these weapons and equipment pouring into Ukraine. How significant does, is that? How will that change the balance? That's crucial. Uh, when, you, when you speak about military capabilities, you, you must have people, I mean soldiers, you must have equipment, and then training and morale. So it seems like now Ukraine has all of that, uh, but anyway, they need, they need much more equipment uh, because they use it. They need still anti-tank uh, grenades, anti-tank anti -tank weapon, anti-aircraft uh, uh, weapon. That's two main areas where we should support as NATO, and that is happening. Uh, and much more equipment is coming from Netherlands, from Belgium, as I said before, uh, from Turkey as well, from Poland, from some other nations, Czech Republic. So that's that's very good. That's what we should do, what we can do at this stage. Uh, and as you said, uh, there are people, there are Ukrainian citizens who are coming back to Ukraine. Uh, I know the number of 80,000 Ukrainian men coming from Poland, from Germany, from some other countries, willing to join this massive movement. And one, one more sentence, uh, which is very promising. You can see also the regular citizens uh, with bare hand, with no equipment or whatsoever, and they are just opposing the convoys, they are just opposing tanks in the small cities or villages. And that is something which is very surprising still for the Russian soldiers. And that is lowering the morale, which is at this stage a quite low. And we have to remember that much of those soldiers are conscripts, a compulsory service. And they are not just professional soldiers. They are not willing right. to yeah. die uh, on, on this battleground. So that's a very good sign. Ukraine needs more equipment, needs our support needs more sanctions in all territories against Russia, and that works, I believe. However, Russian, uh, I would say, military uh, system is still uh, very significant, and it can uh, really defeat Ukrainian armed forces. Got it. All right. Excellent points, Yaroslav Strojic. That's why we're so happy to talk to you today. Thank you.